Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So I once brought a jackass and a honeycomb into a brothel. The madam asked, what can we do for you? I said, I need a woman to lay with, for mine has left me. The madam asked, you poor thing, whatever for, and why do you have a jackass and a honeycomb? Well, I answered, my woman stumbled upon a genie in a bottle, and he granted her three wishes. The first was to have the nicest ass in the land, so he gave her this jackass. Her second wish was for a house fit for a queen, so he gave her this beehive. The madam asked, and what of the third wish? For her third wish, my woman asked the genie to make my manhood hang down past my knee. Well. That one's not so bad, the madam exclaimed. Not so bad, I replied. I used to be six feet tall. <laughs> so, three men are waiting at the pearly gates. St. Peter comes out and informs them that heaven is particularly full that day, and so only those with a horrible death are allowed in. Everyone else has to wait in purgatory for more construction to complete. He then asks the first man how he died. I was convinced my wife was cheating on me, so I came home from work early to our 13th floor apartment. I looked all over the apartment, but couldn't find him. But then, I spotted him hanging from the balcony. I went out and started stomping on his fingers, but he held on. So... Then I went in and got a hammer and smashed his hands, and he fell. But I looked over the rail. He had landed in some bushes and only broken his legs. So I went in and got the refrigerator and pushed it over the edge, and it fell on him. But all the exertion gave me a heart attack, and I died, Peter said. That's awful. Go on in. Then he asked the next man, who replied, I was rearranging the patio furniture on my 14th floor balcony when the wind caught me and I fell. Luckily, I caught the balcony on the floor below. Someone came out. I thought I was saved. But then he started smashing my hands. I held on as long as I could, but then he got a hammer and I couldn't hold on. I fell. I thought I was dead, but the bushes softened the blow. I broke my legs but I was still alive. Then a refrigerator fell on me. And now I'm here. Peter said, that's also awful. Go on in. Then asked the third man how he died. The guy replied, so picture this and just bear with me on this. I'm sitting naked in a refrigerator. <laughs> so a Buddhist monk walks up to a New York City hot dog vendor and said, make me one with everything. The hot dog vendor gives him the cynical scowl that you would expect from a jaded New Yorker. That'll be six bucks. The monk pulls a $50 bill from his pouch and hands it to the vendor. He puts it in his apron and yells, Next! Perplexed, the monk calmly queries, What about my change, sir? The vendor gave the monk a wry smirk and said, I thought you knew change comes from within. <laughs> so, an elderly man in Florida had owned a large farm for several years. He had a large pond in the back, fixed up nice picnic tables, horseshoe courts, a volleyball court, and so many apple and peach trees. The pond was properly shaped and fixed up for swimming. One evening, the old farmer decided to go down to the pond and look it over as he hadn't been there for a while. He grabbed a five-gallon bucket to bring back some fruit. As he neared the pond, he heard voices shouting and laughing with glee. As he came closer, he saw it was a bunch of young women, skinny, dipping in his pond. He made the women aware of his presence, and they all went to the deep end. One of the women shouted to him, We're not coming out until you leave. The old man frowned. I didn't come down here to watch you ladies swim or make you get out of the pond. 
Holding the bucket up, he said, I'm here to feed the alligator. <laughs> so a man is sitting on traffic in Washington, D.C. Cars are backed up as far as he can see. Then he sees another man coming down the street, stopping at each car and talking. When the man gets to him, he rolls down his window and asks, what is going on? The man replies, terrorists have got the entirety of the executive branch, Congress and judicial branches grouped together in one room at the Capitol building and have said that if we do not give them $400 billion by the end of today, they are going to set the entire building on fire collapsing our entire government, and we are going car to car to try and get donations to help with the cause. The driver is astounded and says he would gladly help. How much have other people been donating? The man replies, oh, about a gallon. <laughs> so Sam and Jane were a very nice couple, liked by their friends and business associates. Their one disappointment in life was that they could not have children, so they both immersed themselves in work and became very wealthy and successful. When they came to retire, they discovered that although they were very happy with each other and still in love, something was lacking in their lives. They discussed the situation with friends who suggested they get a pet to enrich their days. Sam and Jane were quite taken with the idea. However, they had spent so much time apart at their work, they were rather looking forward to travel and of that putting a pet in a boarding kennels for extended periods would not be fair to the pet. That seemed to end that, and sadly, Sam and Jane decided to go on without a pet. Then, one day, Sam was passing a pet shop owned by a man he knew, so, on a whim, he stopped in to talk to his pal Jim. After the usual catch-up chat, Sam told Jim about his and Jane's decision about a pet. Jim looked thoughtful and said, I may have the solution. Come to the back room with me. Sam followed Jim into the back room, and there, on a shelf, was a small, furry creature about the size and shape of a soccer ball humming happily to itself. This may be the solution, Jim said. This creature is unique. It is happy alone or with people. It doesn't eat or drink. It is affectionate and cuddly and a great companion. It is, in fact, an unnamed species and so rare that we call it a rarity. I know you and Jane would give it a good home so you can have it if you want it. There is just one thing. You must keep it inside and not tell anyone about it. Because they are so rare, someone might steal it or put it in a lab to study it or something horrible like that. Sam agreed with the condition of secrecy and patted the rarity and was rewarded with a soft gurgle of delight from the creature. Sam was delighted and after a price was agreed upon, took the rarity home to Jane who was thrilled with the new addition to their lives, even though she had to keep it secret and named it Puffy. Things went along swimmingly and Sam and Jane decided to go on a trip. When they got home, all was well with Puffy except for one thing. Puffy was now quite a bit larger and no longer fit on the chair that Sam and Jane had set aside for it. The solution was to let Puffy live on the king-size bed in the guest room, and that worked wonderfully well. For a while, Sam and Jane had grown to love Puffy, who would cuddle with them, sing when they were happy, and croon consolingly when things went wrong. So when they discovered that Puffy was getting too big for the king-size bed, they knocked out a wall and doubled the size of the room. Puffy was fine again. Sam and Jane were delighted and all went well for a time until they went on another trip. When they came home, they discovered that Puffy was now too big for the room. Jane said, we have to do something, dear. It's not fair to keep Puffy all cooped up. Go talk to Jim at the pet shop and see if he has any suggestions. Good idea, said Sam, and off he went. 
After telling Jim how much he and Jane loved Puffy the Rary and how the creature had enriched their lives, Sam explained the size problem to Jim. Aha, Jim said. Puffy should be set free to return to his home. He went on to explain that Rory's were great swimmers, and if put into the ocean, they would unerringly return to the small island that is their home. After much discussion as to how to accomplish this, Sam went home and told Jane. She was very upset about losing Puffy and cried until Puffy's crooning soothed her. Sam, Jane, and Jim spent some time thinking of where Puffy could safely be put into the sea, and when Jim assured them a small drop would not hurt Puffy, it was finally decided the top of a small hill that dropped directly into a deep bay was the spot where Puffy could be sent off to find his way home. Sam arranged to rent a huge flatbed truck and a winch then, covering Puffy with canvas and in the dark of the night to avoid prying eyes. He and Jim loaded Puffy onto the truck and with Jane between them in the truck cab they drove all night, hour after grinding hour, until they finally reached the hill by the sea. There, they said their farewells and gently pushed Puffy into the sea. All three, tears in their eyes, held their breath until they heard Puffy singing and saw Puffy swimming into the early sunrise. They watched until Puffy disappeared and thanked Jim for his help and for all the years of happiness that Puffy had brought them. Sam and Jane never got another pet. When they spoke of Puffy, they remembered all the good times, but Sam said, it had been a tough decision to let Puffy go and the trip to the sea was difficult. Yes, indeed, dear, Jane said. It's a long way to Tipperary. Ha, 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 ha.